Hi and welcome to Milgat Farms. My name is Kevin along with my beautiful wife. We're the proud owners. I, I can't even talk this morning. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Milgat Farms. It's a beautiful day here on the farm. It's the middle of June and it's like, I don't know, 44 degrees. We're in the mountains of Virginia. It's downright chilly. You can see the fog in the valley. I think that's just beautiful. Do you see the trees over there? Just kind of popping out through the fog. That is gorgeous. Those are our meat birds. Today I'm gonna give you an update of what we've been up to. We've had a lot going on the last couple of days to include trying to make some hay, uh, splitting some wood and all those kind of things. So come along, let me tell you what's been going on. You know, normally I'm wearing a baseball cap or some other kind of cap, but it's downright chilly. It really is. It was, I think it was last week, we had 30, 34, 33 degrees in June. I mean, it was cold. A little bit of frost too. Hopefully our garden did okay. I'm not really sure. I gotta go down and check it. If you're new to the channel, do you know what that is right there? You look over here, there's another one. I'll tell you. Up there in the mountain is our maple trees. These are lines that come down to bring the sap during maple season. And they go up and they go right into the building on the other side of, the of that wall is a tank. That's a big thing we do here on the farm. We make organic maple syrup. It is really, really cool. Yesterday I had some trouble with my big saw. It took me a little while, but I finally got it running. Both of these guys are sharpened and let me show you what we're gonna do with it. Now I, I know there's a lot of junk. Before we had three more piles on top of this here and uh, we've got that moved. I'll show you where it is. So here behind the barn, we have wood that's been aging for about six months. This right here is our oldest wood. That's what we use the chainsaws to cut and split. And some of it you can tell is the square stuff. That's regular wood that I'm pulling off the mountain. But this right here, those are culled railroad ties. And that's what those big boards, that's what those beams are over there. Now this has been aged, it's kind of leaning too. So we're probably gonna pull this one next. I stacked this one yesterday. Jeff and I split that the other day. And over here is where we're doing the splitting. Country Roads out of West Virginia uses these baskets. I think it's a great idea. That's for our cottage wood. And I've got another basket over here that I'm gonna set up so that our cottage wood can fit in those. And instead of me moving it a lot of times, I'll just take the basket down there and load from that. These are the cold railroad ties, and I like to bring them over here in bundles. We're gonna finish up what we got here because it's just a little too far away from the splitter. We ended up having to cut it here, and then we gotta, we gotta move it at least one time before we can split it. And in my world, I like to be as efficient as I possibly can, so I wanna move it closer to the splitter, so I just get a, I'm just gonna cut it, and then we'll drop it right there and split it. This is our Easton made 37D splitter. It's a diesel splitter, and I gotta tell you, I can't keep up with it. Even with Jeff and I doing it, we can't keep up with it. I don't know if you saw that video in the past, Ludford and I tried to do it um, to keep up, and we simply couldn't do it. Whenever we get a little short section like this, we'll use it for the cottage. So at some point, we're gonna split this for the cottage and stage it so it, it's ready for the this coming winter. You can see where the boards are coming off the side of the trailer. I didn't put those up correctly the first time. I had to do it really quickly in order to get my wood done. But as soon as we get these cords done, we're gonna take the, all the wood off the trailer and fix it. And we're also gonna put brakes and rotors on this thing too. Not brakes and rotors, but brakes and drums most likely. As far as efficiency goes, this works really well. I'm not touching the wood, but maybe once or twice. Yes, we gotta cut it. Sometimes we have to move it. But once we split it, it goes into the trailer. And the next thing we do is we take the trailer over next to the side of the, of the barn here and we raise it up. As we're raising it up, the wood comes right down to me. So I'm lifting from my chest or my, my waist level, which is a whole lot easier than dropping it on the ground, have to bend over and pick it up. I know that doesn't seem like much, but when you do a couple cords a day, that really helps out. So each year we go through about 12 cords of wood. In the summer months, like right now, we don't go through quite as much, but we do heat our hot water and that's really cool. Truly endless hot water. This wood right here is wood that I pull off the mountain. This is locust, it's old dead trees. I'm gonna do a cord of that and see how well it heats this year. This tool we have on the farm is called a lull. I've had it for a long, long time. I built my cabin with it many, many years ago and I didn't sell it. 
I figured at some point I can use it. And believe it or not, I use it all the time. I had what I was thinking a leak in the hub, but I believe now it was a leak in the hose. So I replaced the hose yesterday, and so far we haven't got a leak. But I'm gonna keep it clean, we're gonna see. I don't see anything in there. I probably should clean it a couple more times. Now also, you'll see right in there, three new bulkheads. And what a bulkhead is, is a fitting that goes through the, the metal and connects the hose on this side and connects the hose on the other side like this. You see those hoses down there? So they're connected as well. Yesterday I put these two bulkheads in and I had to get two hoses made. I think I made that hose and I might have made that, no, no. Okay, now I'm having a senior moment. I had one hose made for the bulkheads and then I made that hose for the steering. Once I was all done, I degreased it, put some hot water in here. So hopefully if we have any leaks, we're gonna find them. You see that pile of junk? That's coming out of that shed over there. That is a lot of tools. And there's even more over there inside of it. So I told the kids if they would get them out of the shed, I'd let them make it into a playhouse. So that's our project for the summer. Turn that thing over there. Let me see it, can you see it? Into the playhouse. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Here we have three more bundles, and these bundles are the cold railroad ties. They are approximately one cord each, and you can see down there where we've got them stacked up. In between both of the posts, if we stack it up seven feet, that's a full cord. We're kind of running out of spaces between our uprights. So as soon as we do, we're gonna start double stacking, and we'll be able to get a little bit more in here. Oh, look at that. The girls have been laying eggs in there. Gabriel loves finding eggs. In the mornings, we have our normal chores that we do to include feeding all of our animals and milking our dairy cow. I, 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 thankfully, Emily's milking right now. I don't know if you caught a video in the past where she hurt her hand, ended up getting 13 stitches. And so for the last month or so, I've been milking. I don't mind doing milking. It does take a couple hours out of my day though, cause we're milking twice a day. Um, pretty soon we're gonna get down to once a day. That's gonna make it a whole lot easier. And uh, but right now, we're not there. We're still doing two times a day. So Emily will do the milking. I'm gonna go feed all of our animals and uh, get ready for the rest of the day's work, which is making hay. I'm gonna head over to a neighbor's farm, help him make a little bit of hay. I'm gonna roll some rounds here. If you look behind me, you can see my, my baler. I gotta dig that thing out again. We made a little bit of hay uh, a week or so ago, um, and now it's time to make some more hay and try to get ready for the winter. Right now I'm standing in front of our driver. We've got two really big fence projects coming up. One is almost done. All right, I'm lying, it's not almost done. I got a few posts to put in, do the corners, and then run my wire. But I got a post in the ground, so I'm not gonna call it almost, but I'm gonna call, we're, we're progressing right along. The other fence project is going from our beehives along our driveway all the way down to our farm stand. And then we're gonna take the right side of that, of that part of the property and turn it into some grazing land for our animals. That's gonna save us on some hay too. All right behind me is the driver. It's really cool. If you haven't seen some of the videos that we posted about that, I'll leave a link in the description to a couple of them. Um, my son, he can operate this. My daughter can operate this, it's pretty cool. Now I wouldn't let them hold the post. That, that's kind of dangerous, but they can certainly do levers and that's a lot of fun. Next week, Jeff's gonna be helping me and we're gonna make a wooden fence. I don't know how long it is, like I don't know, four or 500 feet, maybe more than that. But at any rate, we're gonna make a wooden fence. That way we can get some more grazing land. Hey, would you mind leaving us a thumbs up? It would mean a lot to us, but you know what means the most? is hearing from you in the comments. Where are you watching from? Chasing Daylight, haven't heard from you in a while. Hope you're enjoying some fishing down there in Florida. Thanks again for watching our videos, and until next time, God bless you.